Hey, this is Tom Kubistan, and welcome back to the 200 level series of our video lecturettes on how to perform at your best. This 200 level looks at specific performance issues that you may want to become aware of, learn how to overcome. I'm going to share with you today something you probably never heard of, and it is an issue that once you become aware of it, you can have your performances become a lot more consistent all the way through. Every performance is a unique experience unto itself. And a lot of times it has its own unique dynamics, emphases, and changes to them. One of the areas that I came upon was from what I wrote about in the second book of the performance trilogy of Mind Pump looking at the psychology of bodybuilding or powerlifting or weightlifting. And one of the things in the lifting weights, if you've ever lifted weights before, you know that when you're doing a maximal lift, there comes a sticking point to it so that if you can just go the extra inch, you can finish off and complete the lift. I came up with that idea and looked at performances saying that, yes, a lot of performances have these sticking points in them too, that if we can just endure, if we can just engage a little bit more, we can go past those sticking points. Many times, these mental sticking points occur over halfway or two thirds into the performance, even for a sprinter, a 100 meter sprinter, who runs that in 10 seconds. They've told me, that even in a 10 second sprint, there are different phases to it and different times that they may, a couple of them said that they choked at the 70 meter mark. And this is a 10 second race. Imagine what kind of sticking points it would be in a 30 minute piano concerto or in a two hour and 20 minute marathon that you may be running. That there are so many little nuances into performances. And one of most of these you can't control. So many of us spend time worrying about, fretting apart, about becoming distracted about things we cannot control during a performance. You cannot control even your teammates. You cannot control the opposition. Sometimes the opposition is having a banner day. Good for them. You cannot control inside conditions or logistics. You cannot control outside weather or other can, uh, outside influences. You cannot control officials or referees or judges. And too often we become distracted on those things that we cannot control. And that saps our energy. Instead, emphasize those things during a performance that you can control. When you are performing, you are going deep into yourself by yourself, even though there may be parents or coaches or teachers or musical directors that are there to assist you. It is your performance. You're going deep into yourself and connecting with deeper levels of yourself so you can connect better with the performance. One of these issues is the mental sticking point. When I was in sixth and seventh grade decades ago, um, I was a basketball player. And we would have a coach who would run us through drills upon drills upon drills in our practice session. And a lot of times we didn't know what he was doing or we couldn't repeat it. And he would become so frustrated with us that he would just call a timeout and say, okay, everybody sit on the bleachers here. We're going to have a skull session. And initially, I had no idea what that meant, nor did my teammates. He said, we're going to talk about the game, how to play the game. We're going to talk about how to transfer what we're covering in our practice sessions individually and as a team into the game. Unbeknownst to me, that was the beginnings of modern day sports psychology. We didn't have sports psychologists back then. But I really enjoyed listening to those skull sessions where we started looking at how to play the game, how to play the game correctly, looking at there's 
different types of ebbs and flows to any kind of performance. And I look forward to those skull sessions more than the actual practices. Um, and one of these little ebbs that I became aware of was this mental sticking point. For most performances, those mental sticking points emerge over halfway into the performance where you might've been rehearsed or laid down specifically what your, your openings are, what you're emphasizing, that you've been able to settle into the performance. And through all of that mental concentrating and physical exertions, that expends a lot of energy. So that past halfway or maybe two thirds of the way into the performance, you have this almost this natural little ebb to the performance, this mental sticking point. You're not close enough to the end of the performance yet that will allow you to kick it in, if you will, that you will become focused on finishing it off on a high note. These little mental sticking points are things that if we're not aware of them, uh, it distracts us. Our concentration ebbs, our physical energies ebb, our coordination with teammates or bandmates ebbs during those times. One way is to become aware of these, your patterns of your mental sticking points. Golfers with whom I used to work, we would talk about this and say, on an 18 hole round of golf, where do you experience these mental sticking points? And, and as people started reflecting on those, they said, oh, it's usually around the 13th or 14th hole well into the round, but not close enough to finish off the last three holds really well. So I had them circle on their scorecard, hole number 13 or hole number 14, um, to, to when they see that during the round, they're saying, oh, oh, here comes a mental sticking point. I have to be aware of that. Uh, for um, individual musicians or singers or professional speakers I would work with, I would say, where is your mental sticking point? A lot of times they were so well rehearsed on their openings and so well rehearsed on getting off to a really solid start, settling into their optimal rhythm, but they're not yet close enough to their conclusions. And so with these individual performers, they may encounter and have to almost react to these mental sticking points that happen uh, during ebbs where their mind wanders somewhere. They make no brainer mistakes. They become distracted on things. Those are all things you can prevent by just being aware, number one, of the emergence of these mental sticking points. With some rare cases, some performers have said their mental sticking point happens as a transition point early on in their performance, that they're so well memorized or rehearsed on their opening and the mental sticking point dissuades them from settling into themselves. So on rare occasions, the mental sticking point can happen early on. Become aware of this and learn how to anticipate your mental sticking points. Just by anticipating those, you can sometimes prevent them or minimize them or certainly respond quicker to them. Remember in an earlier series in the 100 level series, we talked about the differences between responding and reacting. If you are in a reactive mode, physiological, neurologically, as well as psychologically, you are not anticipate that and you're sent for a loop when some of these distractions or natural ebbs occur. If you are aware and can anticipate the possibility of a mental sticking point and it starts coming up, you can respond to it much more quickly because you've been able to anticipate it. As you start overcoming these mental sticking points, become more successful with them and just aware of them, you can minimize those and you can recover those so that you can resurrect the performance. You can get past that inch or minute uh, in your performance that you can become close enough to emphasizing how to finish off the performance. Many times we are unaware of these little nigglies 
these little things that take us off track. The mental sticking point is one of these little nuances. Once you're aware of them, you can really stay in the flow, stay in the moment, and be proud of your performances. Give some thought to that. Do some reflecting on that and look at your patterns of your performances, looking for mental sticking points. All they require is you being aware of them, anticipating them, and staying on track for an additional inch or an inch and a, uh, additional minute. And then you're in a position to take pride in completing your performances. I shall see you next time. Thank you.